Hello everybody, it's Austin Holloman back with another sit down video. Thank you very much for coming back to the channel, being so faithful, I appreciate everybody. Also, today I'm wearing my microphone because I had somebody complain in the comments and I, I'm not taking it as negative. I really appreciate it, the feedback. I do respond to feedback, but I do have very good microphones. So I'm gonna put this microphone on so that way there's no echoing and the audio will be a lot better. Now. Today's topic is something that really needs to be talked about, and I've spoke on it, but I've never went into detail, so today I'm going to sit down and talk about it. If you're easily offended, you'll have a hard time watching this video. Are passport bros a problem to the foreign women overseas? What do I mean by that? What I'm saying is, do we act, you know how they say, oh, whenever I first came out on YouTube, people were saying, oh, y'all are going to y'all gonna go over there and make those women just as bad as we are. I'm starting to see that, that's, that they weren't lying about that. Now, I want to make this disclaimer. I am not identified with the Passport Bros, formerly known as one. I never was put in that. I was never made the leader. They just called me that. I never took that. I've always denounced the, the leadership role, even though that I probably know I had the loudest voice in that space. Just to make that clear. And yes, I know I have a tattoo. I also won't be taking a tattoo off because it looks nice. I still love it. It's not a tattoo that I regret. Now, what is one thing that passport bros do that ruins the entire experience whenever they go to different countries? Well, number one, they bring the simp culture. Guys, there's a reason why I never tagged Kate's Instagram cases instagram or anybody that you guys seen in my videos there's a reason why i mean i tagged crystal but she was already on youtube so i didn't mind doing that but you guys of course are gonna go flood her dms and like her photos as expected nothing wrong with that but when you guys do flood the dms they, they show me this stuff it's never a secret they show me you guys are like hey uh what's your cash app which they don't even have cash app in africa but they say, what's your cash app? I'm going to send you $100 uh, just because you're beautiful. No, no, hell no. No, because after so long, and you already can see this a, a little bit in other places around the world, you have women that's like, oh, well, if you can't take me on a trip, you don't even deserve my phone number. And they'll, t they'll, they'll be 20 years old telling that to a 19 year old. I'm telling you, because I had a woman when I was in the United States and I was still a barber and I was making good money. I was making like $2,500 to $4,000 a week cutting hair. And I had a chick tell me that, oh, can you afford to take me on trips? Can you afford? And I'm like, damn, I'm like 20 years old, about to be 21 in a couple of months. Like, should I feel bad that I'm not extravagantly rich? Yes, it's possible to be 20 years old and rich, but the, that's unrealistic. The likely, most 20 year olds don't even know what they want to do. I was just the exception where I already knew what I wanted to do, but as you can see, it switched. I went from being a barber to a YouTuber now. So quit offering money. Quit being so soft. I'm not saying come overseas and be a macho man, right? But the simping that you guys think that would work in the States and it doesn't, it really doesn't work overseas because the men overseas are usually a lot more masculine than American men. Let's just be honest. And when you come over here acting soft, they're used to dealing with men that are usually they're used to dealing with men that are a lot rougher on them. And so. Kindness can be taken for weakness. Some women may say, okay, this is a breath of fresh air that he's not so macho, but we all know there's some bad apples out there that look at it like, okay, I can shit test you and run over you. So please stop simping and overcompensating and stop sending random women money that you've never met and you don't even talk to. Now, I'm, the reason I say that you've never met, maybe if you've been talking for a few months and she want, you want to buy her lunch for 10 15 dollars okay but or even a few weeks but guys just right off the rip i remember my mom my mom showed me an instagram uh dm that she had one day and the dude is like oh i can pay i can pay your light bill it's nothing well it is nothing a light bill is like 150 dollars. that don't even pay the phone bill for some people but still it's just the the concept that y'all have leave that in the united states don't ruin it for everybody else that wants to come over and enjoy 
dealing with women that have some sense, please don't ruin it for everybody else. Number two, they're referred to as pookies and ray rays, which, which really just means thugs and hood dudes, right? Uh, Y'all do, I've seen, and I'm not discriminatory against them. I know everybody has a different background. I have friends that are, you know, what y'all would call hood, right? But do not come to Brazil or come to Kenya and teach the women how to throw up crip and blood and be showing them boys in the hood and sagging your pants around them. Like, what the fuck? Like that, well, why are you doing that? Like that's that's what we're trying to get away from. When I can, at least me, when I go to these other countries, I'm looking for what country gives me the best peace of mind. So if I come to somewhere in Asia and y'all are over here trying to turn the women out and got them acting all hard, like they some sort of gangbanger's wife or something, that's very contradicting to the entire point of us leaving the United States and becoming expats. Most expats want to leave United States culture or cost of living from what I see. And for some reason, the United States is now a, a thug culture, especially when you talk about in the black community, but I'm seeing it all over communities now. So please leave that in the United States. Another thing, do not overcompensate unnecessarily. Just like I said that you guys go to these women's DM and you shoot them $100 just because they're pretty or you want to uh, fly her out, don't fly them to the United States, first of all. But you, and usually they can't even just fly into the United States. The visa process is not as easy as it is for us to leave for people to come in. But I've heard of dudes in the DR and dudes in Thailand and some parts of uh, South America as well, of them buying women cars, getting women apartments that they never met or they met one time. And another way that you guys overcompensate, and I've seen this in the comments with Kesa, right? Uh, Kesa is somebody that when, when she flew into Nairobi, that was my third day ever being face to face with, with her in person. The first two days when I met her in Kigali. But you guys are in the comments on the third day saying, settle down, marry her. You need to take her. I don't know how she is. Why don't y'all take time to vet? I know that it's a lot harder to date in the States, but that does not mean you jump on the first thing moving. You don't go to a car lot and just see the first car that's in good condition and say, I want that one, sign me down for a five-year contract. No, test drive the cars, look at the cars, inspect the cars, see if the car is actually fit for you. Same thing with women. Test her out, see how, see how y'all converse together. See if the sex is good. I mean, what are y'all doing? You need to actually move with better intent when you leave your home country of the United States. And I'm not gonna lie, this is a problem that I've had, but for black men, we have the tendency to use the N-word whenever we go to other countries. I've done it, you guys have seen me do it on a live stream. I try, try, try my best when I'm around women that aren't, especially the ones that aren't black, to not even say that word. Like when I was in Brazil, I never wanted to hear a Brazilian woman to refer to me as a preto, which is, I believe is their word to say in the N word. I, if, that, if I would have ever caught that, that would have been an instant turnoff. So please, the language that you use around the women, and I'm, hold on, I'm 24, but you guys are in your 40s and 30s. You got to know what the consequences are when you behave certain ways around certain women because women do follow and if they like you, they'll pick up on that. And why am I saying this? I'm saying this to say there's nothing more that softens me up and I'm not talking about my toughness. I'm talking about you know, softens me up. Like it doesn't make me hard. It softens me up when I see a woman that is not American, that is trying to behave American. If I wanted McDonald's, I would have went to McDonald's. I wouldn't have went to Chick-fil-A. When I get to Chick-fil-A, I want Chick-fil-A's food. So when I come to another country, I want to experience what that woman will treat me like based off of how she was raised, not based off what she saw on TV 
or YouTube or Facebook or TikTok. And this is the reason why I said that these other countries like countries in Africa should just straight up ban American content. They should have just the same way how Iran and China, they can't see what's going on in the United States. They don't allow their people to engage in the degeneracy that we have in the United States. You guys shouldn't bring it there. And I believe, I truly believe that these countries should not allow their people to see. Because before you know it, over time, they'll, the other countries, maybe it'll take a long time, right? Maybe like 50 years, probably not that long. But they will start to pick up and start to mimic. You can already see that happening in a, in a lot of places, especially somewhere like Thailand. I've even seen it here in Africa. I've seen it in Zambia. I've seen it a little bit in Kenya. I've seen, you don't want women thinking that it's okay just to disrespect men for the hell of it. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, oh, misogynistic men are above women. I'm just saying everybody should be treated with respect. You should respect her. She should respect you. But uh, we know in the United States, that's kind of on the super decline, downfall. Don't expect an American woman to show you a lot of respect. It's not, I'm not saying that they won't, but don't expect it. Now, when I, I do tell you guys, when you go to other countries, it might not be 100% of the time, but it's about 90% of the time that the women are going to have a lot more respect that you're not used to. And that doesn't mean you simp. That doesn't mean you overcompensate. That doesn't mean you marry her just because. Because there are women that have bad intentions, and I've ran into them since I've been outside the United States, that will put on a show. And when they put on that show, they can get you. They, they didn't almost get me. Because they, the reason they can't get me is because I'm traveling around the world. So I'm not even the, the ideal prospect for them. They're looking for somebody that's either like that comes in that way and says, oh, I'm looking for a wife out here. They, oh, they'll put on a show when you say that. Oh, yes, they will put on a show when you say that. Not all of them. But you guys need to practice social skills and learn how to read people and understand when somebody is genuine and when somebody is not. Listen to your own music. Whenever I come to Africa, I really, I love places like Kenya. I was at uh, Milan last night. And yes, they played some American rap music, but it was the old American rap music that wasn't so, you know, it was, it was like music that was for a party. It wasn't people getting shot and killed and they're talking about, like, they're playing like 2005 rap, which was pretty much a whole year of party music. That's what I want to hear if I'm hearing American music. And they also play their own Afrobeats. They play their own stuff. They have their own vibe. I love the way how Africa has their own stuff. The first club I went to in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, I really loved it because they played their music. And I was like, wow, it really feels like I'm in Africa now. Versus, and I'm not taking a shot at Thailand, but versus when I was in Thailand, Bangkok, Phuket, Chiang Mai, and uh, Pattaya, walking down the streets, you hear only American music. So when I, that vibe, if I were to close my eyes, I wouldn't even know I was in Thailand. It gives me the vibe that, hey, I'm just on vacation in another part of the States with a bunch of Asian people. You get what I mean? So believe it or not, when I was in Thailand, I want y'all to play some music that I don't even know the words to. Like, I don't know the words to all the African music. Not all the time are they speaking English. And coming from me, B, if you're African, European, South American, be yourself. I love you for you. That's why I come to your country. That's why I come to you. I came to Kenya because I love Kenyans. I love the way how they are. That's why I end up getting an apartment here that I'm at right now. I love it. I don't want to be around a Kenyan that's trying to be like something that was back home. I could have stayed back home and just got with a Kenyan that immigrated there for that anyway. I want to, I want to immerse myself into the Kenyan culture and learn new stuff that I don't know learn different traditions and I want to feel like I moved out to a different country like literally and again that's why I always say Kenyan women for the win because they know English but they're not trying to be American they're still Kenyan then now there is a, a few that I've met that were trying to mimic but that was like I can't even name their names but for the most part the the ones I have met they're still very much, hey, I'm African, but I speak English. You know, and I'm, I'm aware of some of the stuff that y'all got going on in y'all's country in America, but I'm still Kenyan. And when you come around me, there's gonna be things that I do that you don't recognize. And do not bring the American culture, I'm talking to American men, do not bring our 
values and customs and all that other BS that we have here because it's just BS. The stuff that we practice back home is BS. There's, the United States is literally just good for the opportunities and the military support and the freedom of speech. So, for example, if there was a war that broke out uh, in one of these countries I'm in, I love America because I know if I go back there, they're not coming over there. It's safe for that. It's good for me to make money off YouTube and be able to live a good life in these other countries. Like, you know, I'm out in the top 1% of that country. But other than that, what good can you bring from America to Kenya? I don't think whenever these presidents welcome Americans, I don't think that they're saying, hey, bring your ratchet behavior. Just like I think it was in Ghana, those black women were twerking on some slave monument, some historic slave monument. Do you think that these people really want you to bring that to their country? And that's for the men and women that travel. So another point that I forgot to touch on with the oversimping, that's something that y'all do, is y'all come over here, like I said, y'all send the, money, the women money because you think that they're beautiful, but y'all will also sit there and just constantly just remind them, you know, you're so beautiful. And believe it or not, women worldwide don't want you to constantly remind them how beautiful they are. Yes, it's okay to tell a woman how beautiful she is from time to time, but to the point where she gets confident, she, think, she thinks that she's better than you, and she barely knows you, or she starts building this attitude to now where she's looking down on other men. Like, she de develops a nasty demeanor. Like, she's looking down on other men, and, oh, yeah, you know, you don't look like you good enough for me. The women don't treat you like that outside the States, from what I've experienced in 11 countries in, like, 25 different cities. I haven't experienced that. So just know whenever you start giving them the big head, over time, that part of our culture will integrate into their culture. And also for you guys, and I, I think I said this earlier, that say, oh, you know, she's a nice girl. Like, I, you know, she, thank you so much. Here's 200 US dollars just for going on a date with me. Why are you doing that? Just take her on another date. Do what the local men do. I don't, I don't, I mean, I haven't been here that long, but I don't think the men in Kenya, at least most of them, just give the women money just because they went on a date with them. But in the States, we do that. Oh, I'll pay your light bill. You dudes in the States are just paying rent. I've, I've known women, I've had dudes reach out to my family members and offer to pay their rent just to talk with them on the phone. That is the worst type of action you can bring overseas because then she knows when she runs across the next American, oh, I can get this clown to pay my rent. He gonna pay my rent just because his, the women in his country might not treat him the same way I do. And then before you know it, you got an American woman in another country. So for example, in places, and this is what I've heard, I haven't been to the DR yet, and by DR I mean Dominican Republic, that are sending women money for their light bills or their rent or to get their tires on the car and then the girl won't go on a date with them. Nowadays, what you're having is you have dudes that, oh, I saw Austin Holloman's video, let me go get my passport, and not let, me, not let me go over here and date normally. Let me take that same foolish behavior I'm doing in Texas and take it to South America or the DR, and now you got a bad reputation for Americans that just pay the rent just because, and you don't even gotta go on a date with them. So when the next American comes through, now, Oh, which, what, how much money you got for me? It sounds like you're back home. So now the local men don't even like you because they, went, they aren't, they aren't going to just do it to the Americans. Now they'll start looking at the local men in Kenya different. Oh, why would I fool with you? I can get this American to do that. No, I think women in their own country should pick who's the best option, whether if it's an American or Arabian, whoever, but not because he's going to pay your rent. <laughs> and you don't have to go on a date with him and you can just keep him in your back pocket and then shit on the local men. I don't, I hate it when I see that. So somebody told me that in my Facebook group, which is Enlightened Western Men, if you have not joined the Facebook group and you're an American or a foreigner just in general, please join the Facebook group to see because there's a lot of good stuff going on there. But there was a dude in there that was complaining about American black women doing this and that. But he goes to South America and then he gets on the group after that and is bragging about how he's teaching, and I've never done this, I've never even thought to do this, but he's teaching the Brazilians American slang. American slang so she can better understand the stuff she sees on TikTok. And before you know it, she's getting brainwashed. I've never thought to come to Kenya 
No, I want to learn y'all slang. That way, if y'all talking crazy about me, I know it. But I know the Kenyans wouldn't do that. Plus, shout out to... I get so much love from Kenya. I was at the club yesterday night, and five people came up to me that said they, they was watching my YouTube. They was introducing to me to all their friends. We're, we're glad you're here, taking pictures with me. That makes me feel really special, and I appreciate it. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up that video. Let me know what you guys think, but I want to say this to the... American men that are planning to come to places like Africa, if you cannot get women in the States, at least do not leave until you can get one, maybe even two, and be successful. Not have a relationship, but at least be able to go on a date with them and have them actually liking you. Because in Asia, I, I'm going to put it like this. In Asia, dating is going to be pretty much on easy mode in the, in the four countries I went to there. And South America is going to be more moderate and you know, realistic. And Africa is going to be realistic too. But you cannot come, when you come to these African countries, you have to be on top of your shit. You cannot be simping because they will take advantage of that. Trust me. You cannot be just not even physically attractive because you're not going to get no play. Trust me. Because they're in shape. And they're, the thing is, the African women, they're born in shape. I don't know about their bone structure or what it is, but they are born in shape. So don't think you can just come over here and get the same results that I talk about or you see me getting. And you want to put in minimal work on yourself. But thank you guys for watching the video. Like if you have not already. Share with somebody that needs to hear this. Leave a comment on what you think. Subscribe if you have not already. And if you have not already signed up for the membership, you want to see exclusive content. For example, I talked about what happened with Kate and I, and that was a woman I was dating in Thailand. Well, for $5 a month, you can view videos like that that I probably wouldn't prefer to just have publicly, but it is public because it's on the internet. But make sure you sign up for that. And also, if you sign up for the mid-level membership for $20 a month, you can get a 10-minute consultation with me every month. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.